Our next speaker. Our next speaker is one of State Parliament's most hard-working and principled politicians. Yeah, he's good. Ever since entering the, legis the legislative, get that right, the Legislative Council in 2010, he's been tireless in standing up against public sector cuts, the use of sniffer dogs and the expansion of arbitrary police powers. His campaign on the behalf of the victims of sexual assault at the hands of the Catholic Church. He's advocated for justice for the victims of the Bowerful murders and their families. And he's defended the right to protest. His latest fight is against new laws that will strip people innocent of any crime who have never been charged or convicted of basic rights solely at the discretion of police. Please give a big welcome to David Shoebridge. But I'm never following that guy to spe at a rally ever again. His intro speech was brilliant. Congratulations. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge we're meeting today on Gadigal land. Thanks, Aunty Jenny, for that welcome to country. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. And we need a tree with our first people. As one of the Greens MPs in the New South Wales Parliament, when you're standing up here to talk against Mike Baird, the real problem is where do you start? Where do you start? Well, let's start with local government. Let's start with local government. And his, Mike Baird, his Liberal and Coalition mates, have destroyed the concept of local democracy. They've sacked the Inner West Councils. They've removed democracy. They've put in their mates to run the place for 18 months and they think we'll just lie down and have our bellies tickled. Well, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. But I want you to know this. It's not just in the inner west where people are in open revolt against Mike Baird's attack on local democracy. In the mid-north coast, in the mid-coast, there's a plucky little council called Gloucester that had a job on it. They stood up to Cold Sea Gas, they, 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 they got rid of AGL, they kicked them out of their shine. Oh, awesome. And what did Mike Baird do to Gloucester? He sacked them, he put them in a mega merger, he joined them with two other councils, and he thought again, the people of Gloucester, the people of Gloucester, the people of Tare would just lie down. Well, they did not. They attended their council. They attended the first council meeting of this so-called Mid-Coast Council, where the administrator is a bloke in the pay of the coal industry. And they stood up, the nitty nannies sat in the chairs, and they said they want their council back. Well, we're going to give it to them. We're going to join with them. And it's not just in the inner west. I've got to say it's not just in mid-coast. My local council is controlled by Liberals. They're taking Mike Baird to court. Good on them. And look around you. Look how many people are out on the streets today trying to say, we want our neighbourhoods back, we want our environment back, we want our democracy back. Thousands here today. It's around the state, but it's around the globe too. You think what's happening in the United States and a bloke called Bernie, who is actually restoring faith in democracy. This is a global movement to get our democracy back for the Robert Barrett's who have stolen it. and talk about the attack on democracy without mentioning the attack on TAFE. That fundamental part, that chance, that second chance education, that skills training, the institution, a wonderful public institution that makes us a vibrant democracy and gives people a path to solid, well-made, respecting jobs and Mike Baird cannot destroy TAFE. So to the PSA, to the teachers, all those people standing up for TAFE, we are with you. I know 
many of you would have seen those trees coming down on Anzac Parade? Those beautiful big trees? The hearts and lungs of that part of Sydney, those beautiful strips of, of, of those green trees, which were a statement of the intelligence and the far side of those people 80 or 100 years ago who planted them and nurtured them and knew that they would be the lungs of our city. And in one afternoon, the chainsaws went down and cut them down and tears fell. We're going to regrow those trees. We're going to regrow those trees, but it's not just the trees in the, in the eastern suburbs of Sydney. Mike Baird's already taken to the trees around Sydney with his 1050 laws and the chainsaws didn't end, but now he wants to tear down the native vegetation laws. He wants to see native vegetation clear belt by a tiny minority of farmers who think that they can make more money out of chopping down native vegetation for one or two years of crops. Well, we're not going to let that happen either, are we? So get a submission into the Biodiversity Review. Keep an eye on it because that's a real threat to the future of our endangered plants and animals, koalas, the whole, the whole biodiversity of New South Wales is under attack from this bloke and we can't let it happen. I've been asked to talk about police powers today. We as the Greens have been running a long-term campaign against drug dogs. You know the dogs that get it wrong three quarters of the time. When they get it right, they find one joint on somebody and they humiliate them and they get arrested and a huge amount of our tax money is spent doing stupidity with drug dogs. Well, so they have it. So they have it. And when my colleague Jenny Leong, the member for Newtown, is here today, hi Jenny. When Jenny and I stood up against it and Jenny had the temerity of putting something on her Facebook page along the lines of drug dogs are pretty stupid, she got attacked. She got attacked even by members of the police. Yeah. And that was my fair. We are running the risk of becoming a police state in New South Wales. Now let me just give you a little list. It'll take a little moment. Soon after Mike Baird came into power in 2011, he passed a new set of laws called consorting laws. And they allow the police to tell any one of you, you don't have to have committed an offence, they can tell any one of you that there's somebody you can't meet. You can't ever meet them again, you can't email them, you can't talk to them, you can have no contact with them at all. You've committed no offence, and if you do, they can put you in jail for up to three years. The police can choose who you meet with. There's no, there's no appeal against it to a court, and if you think that wouldn't happen very often, we got some figures just this week which showed the police have issued more than 8,500 of these consorting directions since they got the powers up and running in 2011. Mike Baird got new powers to move on people about three years ago. And the police at the moment are mainly using them against the usual suspects. They're using them against the Aboriginal people. They're using them against students. They're using them against young people. But make my no mistake, they can use them against all of us. And just about two months ago, they passed a new set of police powers through the New South Wales Parliament that allowed them to criminalise protest. And if the New South Wales Police... And if the New South Wales Police thought that you all gathering here today in your thousands, and good on you, if they thought that you all gathering here today in your thousands created a safety issue, they can take over the microphone, issue a move on order, and direct you to disperse. And if you did it, they could arrest you and they could jail you. What kind of place are we living in? And, and it's no surprise that Mike Baird doesn't like the citizens from the revolt against coal seam gas. So what did he do? He made it a crime punishable by seven years jail for Nitty Nanners to stand in front of a coal seam gas truck and not let them on the property to destroy the land and the water that they're on. This is no democracy. But I'm not finished, I'm sorry. Just three weeks ago, he passed a new 
draft of laws through the New South Wales Parliament. One of them is a public safety order power. A police officer, senior police officer, no reference to a court, no need for evidence, can now issue any one of you, any one of you with a public safety order. If they think that you going somewhere is going to create a safety concern, a public safety concern, and they can tell you you can't go there all Friday, or you can't go there all Saturday, or you can't go there all Sunday, and they can say that that order against any one of you will last the rest of your natural life. You can't go to mosque, you can't go to church, you can't go to a protest meeting, you can't go to a union meeting, whatever they like. And you have no appeal against it in any court in the state. That is a disgrace. Let's be clear about it. They haven't started using the laws yet. They haven't started using their law after law to criminalise protests, to jail you at whim, to put in place public safety orders. But when they do, the machinery is in place in New South Wales to turn this place into a police state and we are not going to take it. We are not going to take it. And I am not interested in waiting three years to get this place back. I'm not interested in waiting until the next state election. We want to return, we want to recover our neighbourhoods. We're going to stand up for our environment. We're going to take back our democracy. Because Mike Baird and his Zeppelin coalition mates are not governing for us and they can't govern without us. So let's go to Parliament and tell them what we think. Thanks so much.